people with chronic kidney disease, CKD, who have proteinuria, ACE inhibitors, and angiotensin receptor blockers, ARBs, are evidence-based treatment mainstays for reducing cardiovascular and kidney disease complications. Despite long-standing guidelines recommending ACE inhibitor or ARB therapy for proteinuria, many patients are not receiving these medications. And based on our study, many who do receive these medications are not on the doses that could optimize their protective benefits. My name is Chi Chu. I'm an assistant professor in the Division of Nephrology at the University of California, San Francisco, giving a summary of our article, Submaximal Angiotensin Converting Enzyme Inhibitor and Angiotensin Receptor Blocker Dosing Among Persons with Proteinuria. This article will appear in an upcoming issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. So we know that ACE inhibitors and ARBs are well-established treatments for uh, cardiovascular and kidney protective benefit in CKD with proteinuria. However, studies have consistently shown that they're underutilized with about 40 to 50% of patients with proteinuria receiving these medications. Few studies have examined whether patients receiving these medications are on optimal doses. This is of interest because clinical practice guidelines recommend that these medications be titrated to the highest dose that's tolerated in order to achieve the benefit observed in clinical trials. In this study, we examined patients who were taking ACE inhibitors and ARBs, and we looked at the proportion who were receiving maximal doses of these medications. We also examined potential contraindications, reasons why a patient might not be able to tolerate a higher dose than they were receiving. We used national electronic health record data from the Optum Labs data warehouse from 2017 to 2018. We included 100,238 adults with proteinuria who were receiving treatment with ACE inhibitors or ARBs. In total, we found that 30% were receiving maximal doses of their respective ACE inhibitor or ARB. Among those who did not have apparent contraindications to ACE inhibitor or ARB dose escalation, that is those without low blood pressure, high potassium, low estimated glomerular filtration rate less than 15, or recent acute kidney injury, we found that only 32% were receiving ACE inhibitor or ARB therapy at maximal doses. In a secondary analysis, we looked at patients' projected risk of developing kidney failure. We found that patients with higher kidney failure risk were more likely to be on maximal doses. But when we looked at the group of patients with the highest kidney failure risk, even then, only 34% were on maximal doses. In practice, what this suggests is that there's a lot of room for improvement in titrating ACE inhibitor and ARB therapy to the highest tolerated doses, which we hope will maximize the cardiovascular and kidney protective benefits associated with these medications. There may also be implications for the development of quality measures, which tend to be based on whether a patient is receiving a guideline-indicated medication or not. However, designing measures this way doesn't fully capture the dosing considerations that are recommended for achieving optimal clinical outcomes, prevention of cardiovascular disease, and CKD progression. From a patient perspective, it's important to understand that some blood pressure medications have specific heart and kidney protective benefits in addition to the blood pressure effect. Getting to the right combination of medications and dosages will involve working closely with physicians and involve some adjustment and monitoring over time, but this is necessary to find the optimal regimen that not only controls blood pressure, but also maximizes the heart and kidney benefits in the long run. In terms of next steps in research, we need to put this into context. ACE inhibitors and ARBs are underutilized. We know that for a variety of reasons. And some early evidence suggests that newer agents, such as SGLT2 inhibitors, which are also effective disease-modifying therapies in CKD, may face similar barriers to dissemination in reaching patients who could benefit. Identifying and addressing these gaps, going from evidence to practice, will be critical to achieve reduction in CKD-related complications, preventing kidney failure, dialysis, and the increased cardiovascular risk uh, that comes with declining kidney function. Part of this implementation work is not just understanding how to get people on these proven medications, 
but also to consider that we want to get people to be on the maximal tolerated doses of these medications in order to achieve the remarkable benefits seen in clinical trials. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.